Now today we'll be replacing a leaking axle seal. Let's get right into it. Now if you do not have an impact gun, you can simply use a breaker bar to loosen up the lug nuts. And a very good jacking point is of course the cross member or subframe. And of course do not forget your jack stands. Now we need to break the axle nut. Two ways you can do this. Number one is have someone step on the brake pedal. Once again, the breaker bar along with a 36 mil socket. Of course, as always, I'll have links in the description box below regarding the tools. And then I have a pipe. Okay, now this pipe, it's a one by 24. You'll see in a moment, but this will simply fit right over the breaker bar to break the axle nut. And just to make this a little bit easier, grab yourself a flathead and if you take a look at the axle nut, you'll find a point where it's actually hammered in to a small opening here. So you want to pry that out. So grab a flathead and just pry this out and this will make it easier to remove the nut. So once again, break the bar, the socket, and the pipe. Then you place the pipe over the breaker bar. This gives you a lot more leverage to put your entire weight into the vehicle. And if you are using an impact, it should have more than enough power to zip off the axle nut. Now we're going to remove the lower ball joint first. There's a cotter pin. Now if these ever really get stuck on you, you can try driving them with a nail. Ultimately, if you still have trouble, you can drill them out, but we're okay in this case. Now before we remove this lower fastener, I'm just spraying it down with PB Blaster and let it sit for a few moments. A breaker bar, in this case 17 millimeter fastener. Uh, 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 whew, it's tight. And once you have the fastener loose enough, you can go on and remove the ball joint from the control arm. Now this is an older vehicle, this is cast iron. So I can strike this point right here with a heavy hammer, three, four pound hammer, and this will knock itself loose. If you don't want to do that, or maybe if your control arm is aluminum, I would not strike it with a hammer, I would simply use a service set. Now this, this you can rent from your local parts store for free. In my case, I own this set. Now I'll start by spraying the fasteners with PB Blaster. Spray a little bit, there's a little crack back here. Just spray a little bit, let it soak there for a few moments. Okay, 14 millimeter. This is a half inch drive. Now if this is very difficult for you to remove and you don't have any impact tools, just use a breaker bar. Which I may actually grab. Yep, I need one. Hold on. I'll show you what that looks like. With this very, very long handle, I can break loose the fastener. Make sure you use PB Blaster, WD-40, liquid wrench, whatever you like. Then I'm taking a rubber mallet. Okay. Now removing the fork here sometimes can be difficult. This is sort of, uh, well it is rusted on. So once again, PB Blaster, let it soak a little bit. Ultimately, if you really have trouble, you can't get this off. There's only three fasteners holding on the strut at this point. And if you need a guide, I did a video on that. Very, very easy, but let's let this soak for a few minutes and then I think we can get this off. And good practice, just put the fastener back where it belongs. Now we're going to remove the sway bar links. Once again, PB Blaster. So here we go, break a bar. Makes all the difference. So this is a T30 adapter. Make sure it's firmly in there. And this holds everything in place. 
Okay, I just want to stop here for a moment and explain something. At this point, you should have enough room, working room, to remove the axle, which you will see in a moment. Now, you may find as you do this job, the steering knuckle is in the way. It's sort of cumbersome. You have to put it to the right angle to get access to the, to the axle. I find it easier just to remove the entire steering knuckle. That's me personally. If you want to go that extra step, I will include a link right now on how to remove the entire knuckle. It's really not that difficult, but at this point, you do have enough working room to remove the axle, okay? The other thing is, which you'll see in a moment, the axle on this Acura was so difficult to remove. In fact, it bent my pry bars. So if you do have this trouble, or if you want to try the pry bars first, by all means do that, but you'll see what worked for me. Now let me share with you two things I have already tried. Of course, a set of pry bars. Look how long these pry bars are. Roughly 18 inches, this one is 15 inches in length, and the ends are completely bent. These are shot, I can no longer use these. That's how stubborn this axle is. However, this should help you immensely a three or four pound hammer and a chisel. Now look at the shape of the chisel. You do not want something like this. This may, may not work. You need something that's quite thick. Also get one that has a little bit more length. This is seven inches. You really want something 10 to 12. That will give you more working room, but this will do the job. Now this is what's left of the axle. It's something I did a previous video on. Nonetheless, this will work if the axle is completely intact on your vehicle. So let's insert, right there is where you're inserting that chisel. Now once again, you want a long chisel. If this was longer, I would have more success or better success because it's hard to hold. I think that did it. Ah, we're almost there. Almost there. A little bit more. That's it. We got it. Use the chisel. Makes all the difference. Okay, so right there is our axle seal. Now sometimes you can just simply use a pry bar to remove these. The trouble here is the angle is not what we need it to be. There's no working room down here. So we can simply use a seal puller. Now what I'll try to do is go around it because sometimes on cheap seals See how pointy this is? And it will rip the seal. So try, if you can, try to use different spots. Oh, there it comes. And here is our old seal. Now you want to clean the area the best that you possibly can. Now there are two ways to install the new seal. You can use actually the same socket to remove the axle, a 36 millimeter socket and lightly tap it in. I know it's the camera really can't pick it up here. It's very, very tight. Or you can use the old seal. Place it around the new one and lightly tap it in. It doesn't need a lot of force to get in, fortunately. So the new seal is in there and we can now put everything back together. And before we insert the axle, just take some nice grease So here is our brand new CV axle. You just want to make sure that it's at least greased as this one is from the factory. If you do need to grease it, very, very, very little grease. You don't need a lot. And then you just want to make sure that the splines line up inside the transmission. There's a way you can do that. Okay, so here we go slowly and gently. Well, everything lines up. So before you start really putting in a lot of strength to reinstall the axle in the transmission, you want to make sure that the splines are lining up. So on the opposite wheel, just turn it and make sure that your axle on the other end is also turning. That will tell you that at least inside, 
the transmission, the splines are lining up. Now you need to have some strength doing this. You're going to push the axle into the transmission. You can go a little bit like this if you want to. Just don't pull too hard because you don't want to have the boot dislodge from the axle, okay? So make it as straight as you can. And from underneath the vehicle, we can see that it's securely in place. Put some muscle into it. It's a little hard. So now I'm just placing our loading up the suspension here before we torque everything down. Now the lower ball joint is 65 foot-pounds. Okay. Now the last step is just tightening down the axle nut. This is 181 foot-pounds. So I'm going to call it a night, guys. Last thing, put on the wheel. Check the vehicle down, take it for a test drive, and that's it. Uh, but it's really late, so as always, thank you so much for watching.